Hey there, this is Matt Hulquist from the QuickBooks University. And in this video, I wanted to walk you through the top three mistakes that I see clients and others make in banking transactions. And these three things can really mess up your QuickBooks file. And it just creates uh, havoc down the road when you wanna clean things up and you're trying to go back and figure out what you did and you have no idea um, and it also messes up reports, so it makes it that much harder to make decisions because when you're looking at bad information, uh, you just can't make the right decisions. Or worse, you're going to make the wrong decisions because you have bad information. So just like anything else, it's garbage in, garbage out. You want to make sure that you do these three things right in QuickBooks. Okay, so the first thing is in QuickBooks, when you send an invoice to a customer, and if you do it through QuickBooks, there's a certain way that you wanna receive that payment, okay? I'll go through that in a second. Uh, but the first mistake that people do is they go in and they say, let's say they get a check in the mail. They send an invoice, they get a check in the mail, and they go to banking make deposits. Seems simple enough, okay? We're gonna close this. Simple enough, you got a check in the mail. It's from a customer. Uh, it was for Christy Abercrombie's family room, uh, and they're going to call this revenue because they just got income. Okay, this was, let's say, design income. And, uh, you know, they fill in the check number, and they get the payment method, and it's, you know, a check, and the amount was $5,000. Okay, so easy enough. They're going to make a deposit. They got a check for $5,000. They're going to put it to Christy Abercrombie, put it to design income, and they're done. Okay? So they're going to save and close this. Now, the problem with this is if you have an invoice outstanding for Christy Abercrombie already for this $5,000 for this design income, you now, by doing it this way, are going to effectively double count your revenue. All right, now how is that? One, because when you did the invoice, that creates revenue and accounts receivable. And then two, when you get the payment, okay, you're putting it to income again. So now you have effectively double counted your income. So when the income should have been, the revenue should have been $5,000, now it's 10, okay? So do not do this. If you have an invoice outstanding for somebody, you want to record it the correct way. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me clear this. So that's mistake number one. Do not do this. If you have an invoice outstanding, you get a payment. Don't go to the make deposit screen. All right. So let's clear this. I want to close this. Okay. So here's how you do this. And this leads into mistake number two as well. Okay. So customer sends a payment. You get the payment in the mail you have an invoice outstanding, all right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna click on this button, receive payments, okay? And you'll see there, it says record a payment you've received from a customer against an invoice or billing statement. So receive the payment, okay? So this is a customer payment, all right? So let's say that uh, we receive a payment from Chris Baker for the family room, okay? You'll see there's no unpaid invoices for this customer. Let's just pick one where there is. I'm go through here and see if I can find, uh, let's see, this Christy, nah. All right, let me do something to make this a little bit simpler. I'm gonna look up my customers and receivables. Okay, so Robert Allard remodel, okay. Customers, receive payments, remodel. Okay, so you'll see here his invoice shows up, 14510 So let's say that he pays 14510 We type that in, and it's going to automatically check this off. Okay, so this is how you want to record it when a customer pays you that has an invoice outstanding. All right, pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Now, here's the second mistake, though. Once we receive this, 
this payment that's a check that came in the mail, look at this. When I say, where does this payment go? It says QuickBooks groups payments automatically in the undeposited funds account to make them available for deposit later. Okay. So what does that mean? There's an account that QuickBooks will put this money to called undeposited funds, and you can change this in the preferences, but generally it's going to be set up this way by default. And the reason they do that is because they're assuming that you're going to, you know, keep all these checks. You're going to record the payments in QuickBooks, but you might keep them and go to the bank, say, once or twice a week. And then when you go to the bank, you have to move them from the undeposited funds account to the bank account. Okay, that's the second error. People generally don't do that. All right, so let's say save and close. We got this payment. All right, so let me view my open window list over here. Go to the home screen, and we're going to say banking make deposits. Okay, so you're going to see this Robert Allard make deposits. So the second mistake people do is they don't move it from undeposited funds to the bank deposit when they actually physically go make the deposit. So what does this do? So they're going to go and they're going to make this deposit and then they might get their bank statement at the end of the month and they notice that in QuickBooks there's nothing in the checking account register showing this deposit for the remodel. So they're going to add it again. And this time the account, they might put it to accounts receivable, they might put it to revenue. If they do it to revenue, they're going to double count revenue again. All right. Huge mistake. So what you want to make sure that you do is if it goes to undeposited funds and you go to the bank, go to this banking, make deposit and check off which payments you've received. Okay. Hit OK. And it's going to say this is the check that we're depositing. So when you do this, it takes it out of undeposited funds and it puts it into the checking account. Very, very important. Otherwise, you risk either double counting your sales, you know, overstating cash. Um, there's any number of issues that can happen. And I've seen it where for, for years, people have not moved money from undeposited funds to the checking account and they have, you know, million dollar balances and undeposited funds and they've essentially double counted that revenue over the last couple of years. Big, big issue. Okay. So I'm going to clear this out, close this out. Now, the third big mistake that people make is they do not reconcile their bank statement in QuickBooks. Okay. This is very, very simple to do. And it's just like reconciling your bank statement. You know, you receive a bank statement in the mail, you get it online at the end of the month, and it shows, you know, what cleared, what didn't clear, and it shows uh, the ending balance. Okay, so it's very simple to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to reconcile right here. It's going to bring up this screen. You're going to type in the ending balance. Uh, since this is a sample file, we'll say the ending balance is $5,000. You're going to enter any service charges or interest earned. Okay. And then you're going to hit continue. And what you're going to do is you're going to hide transactions after the statement end date. And then you're going to go through that physical bank statement you got and check off what has cleared and don't check off what has not cleared. Okay. And when you're all said and done, this difference right here needs to be zero for you to reconcile. And once it hits zero, you click reconcile now and you have reconciled your bank statement in QuickBooks. It's as simple as that. But I would say 98% of people don't do it. And you need to make sure that this is part of your monthly close process in your accounting so that you are reconciling your bank statement every month. If you don't, you do risk uh, either over or understating your cash. Um, which for a small business can be very, very important to know how much cash you have in the account uh, at any given time to make sure that you have the proper cash flow. So these are some big mistakes to avoid in QuickBooks that I see happen all the time. Okay, so make sure that you do these correctly. 
And I also encourage you, come over to QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. We've got three free videos over there where I walk you through a couple of other big areas that people do wrong. And uh, you want to make sure you do those right to make sure you have the proper information in your QuickBooks file. Because at the end of the day, it's extremely vital to have the right information so that you can make the right decisions in your business. So come on over, check us out, qbuniversity.org. Grab your three uh, free videos over there, and I look forward to uh, seeing you over there.